Um, I would like personally to thank the heads of state and government and our institutional leaders who are present here today. As an African citizen, I can tell you, and as an international leader, it's not because we don't have anything else to do back at home. This is an important meeting. The issues we are discussing today are an existential threat to every single one of us, the eight billion on God's earth. And so it is important that we see you today. I do also join in the regrets that key decision makers are not at this meeting. Uh, the number of people around this table, it is lopsided. A bird only flies on two wings. We need genuine partnerships and they need to be at the table. So I hope those representing them will take those messages home. I would say with the response to COVID, as the Secretary General has said, the response to climate change and the response to the impacts of the war and the rest of the world in Ukraine, we've probably gone past the time we call for solidarity because we have been calling for it for many years. We're also almost past the time of the promise to humankind while protect, protecting our planet. And I would say what is now at risk is that you add another debt to Africa and SIDS, one of solidarity and one of the broken promises. Let me express my solidarity with the people of Pakistan who are facing the latest of the worst catastrophes that we have seen from climate. But Excellencies, friends, ladies and gentlemen, four African presidents, the president of the African Development Bank, our chair of the African Union Commission have spoken on behalf of Africa. Um, and I'm going to set it aside my speech and just say two, three things because I would only reiterate and amplify their calls. This is a table of doers. We've heard everything from the science, from the crises, from the transformations that we need, including that it is of no fault of Africa that we are in this position. And one wonders what would happen if the roles were reversed. Missing and missing right in the conversations we're having right now is the urgency and scale for the investments that are needed by developed countries for the commitments to keep the 1.5 degree promise and to keep the Paris Agreement. Africa has provided a litany of things that are needed, pipelines of projects, evidence of ability to do these things on the continent and money spent. It is calling for transitions in food systems, in energy, in the digital world that we all have a right to have today, and yet we are still behind. On our way to COP27, the Africa COP, the implementation COP, the adaptation COP, the partnership COP, the COP that really should say to the rest of the world as we come to COP28 and the stock take, we're back on track, we've recovered. It's three months away. Sadly today, we are seeing ourselves walk back on our promises because no matter what we do, that one plus one is not making two, it's making six, it's making seven. There's different definitions of what progress means. And I'm one of those that believe in keeping hope alive, so I don't mind shifting what it is we're doing to so it gives us a little bit more hope for tomorrow. But what is clear is the Glasgow Pact, which was negotiated very carefully by Alloc, with a huge amount of dexterity, is at risk of failing as is the 100 billion, which by the way is a handshake. It's not the money we need for climate action. It's a handshake of what it means to have a genuine partnership on issues that Africa has and the SIDS have had no part in playing. Adaptation funds down. The 130 trillion, which was taken to as, as a promise of Glasgow of, of what could be available. The mitigation, we're seeing more emissions today than we ever had and they're rising. Yet, even as we witness heat waves in Europe, in the Horn of Africa, Pakistan's latest catastrophe, I'm not sure what it is that will convince us to move the next pace forward. The plea, the clarion call, the ask, the challenge, that in the UN General Assembly, in less than 10 days' time, in the annual meetings, in um, the uh, G20 that's hanging by a thread as well, that we come with the tools that will unlock the resources we know are there. The financing that is needed by COP27. And we know it's possible. Why? Because the leadership of Kristalina Georgieva has proved it. 
She's brought to the table innovative mechanisms like the RST with countries already applying for it to fruition. By October, we'll be in, in, we'll be in business. It's possible because if we replenish the ADF, what already Akin has shown us can go to scale. It's possible because that 100 billion is almost there. So we need the signals that Glasgow meant something, that Paris is alive, that hope is alive, that 1.5 degrees is no longer hanging by a thread, that the evidence and the science, most importantly, the lives that have been lost, the livelihoods and the property that has been lost in Africa, really does demonstrate the reality for over 1 billion people in jeopardy. So let's use this moment for a reset for Africa and for the world and for our future generations. Thank you. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king. I think. I'm a king.